Guild of Heroes, Tales from the Guild number two, Magic. Morning. It would keep blasted happening, wouldn't it? Elimus laboriously opened one eye and sighed. The sun was rising, and so should he. Well, he thought as he forced the other eye open, at least things had been peaceful in Heim and the surrounding kingdom for several months. With a new member coming to join the guild, things were looking downright settled. Well, as settled as they ever could be when you put so many people of differing backgrounds and personalities together in one building. Sometimes you got love, and sometimes you got bards who met with unfortunate accidents under highly suspicious circumstances. Well, that couldn't be helped when you lived with an assassin who had access to a library of colorful poisons. Though nothing could be proven, and Kramhild vehemently denied any involvement. Elimas washed his face and went to his wardrobe as he wrung water out of his lengthy beard. He'd be out in the city today, which meant he would have to wear the whole blasted getup. People like to see a wizard that fit the ideal, especially if that wizard was the famous Elimas, lightning of the east, scourge of goblin kind, and friend to dragons. That last title was heavily embellished, but he'd once stood near a dragon, so he supposed that was good enough. Elimus reached into his tall wardrobe and selected a long robe and pointed hat. Fully dressed, the wizard stepped quietly from his room and out onto the long, railinged landing which looked down into the guild hall common area. All the sleeping rooms ran out to either side of him along the southern end of the guild building. He knew those of his company that were at home would still be tucked warmly in their beds. The sun was merely peeking over the horizon and it would take it longer to peer over the walls of the city. If he was honest, Ellie must preferred this time of day, when everything was still and the last night's fire was nothing but sleepy embers on the hearth. A man could be alone with his thoughts, and wizards were a thoughtful lot. In moments, Elimus was about his morning routine and had the cooking fire magically ablaze as he brewed tea with his other hand. He hardly noticed when Bodhi came down the stairs for his morning prayers and meditations. The monk paused to watch the mage, and when he spoke it startled Elimus, who had been going over a particularly difficult spell in his head, a real tongue twister. Didn't you tell me you were going to try to use your magic less for mundane tasks? Bodhi asked. This is nothing, Elimus defended, turning to face the monk. He knew how the man felt about magic. Just the smallest of spells, the cook fire takes but one word to have it going. Mm-hmm, Bodhi said, still watching with obvious disdain. I hope you don't expect me to eat before I meditate. Perish the thought, Elimas said, flapping his hand dramatically in the man's direction. Bodhi narrowed his eyes, as though contemplating whether or not to retort. Then he turned his back and settled down in the lotus position in the middle of the floor. Wonderful, Elimas muttered under his breath. He's going to be underfoot all morning. I can hear you, Bodhi snapped. He was, as usual, shirtless, showing off a well-muscled chest and shoulders that had all the village women swooning. Pity the monk was married to his god, or so he claimed. Elimus was ever vigilant to catch the man entering a brothel or sneaking out at odd hours. Thus far, he had been unsuccessful. With a dismissive grunt, the wizard turned back to his tea, which had finished steeping. Smells good. Elimus angled himself slightly to see who was coming down the stairs, though he knew the voice well. Good morning, Maud, he greeted the warrior woman. You're up early. Mission later today, she explained, pushing her fringe of dark hair away from her face as she cocked a lopsided smile his way. Elimus liked Maud. She was steady, sensible, but absolutely vicious in battle. She'd placed herself between Elimus and death more times than he could count. Nothing dangerous, I hope, he said, smiling at his friend. Don't think so, Maud said, sitting down at one of the long tables which dominated the expansive main room of the guild hall. Should be easy enough. They only asked for me and Lotan, so it can't be much. Out of the city? No, here. Maud replied, turning to lean her back against the table, propping her elbows up on its clean surface. You busy today? 
I've got a task or two, Ellie Moss chuckled. They had all been trained to be vague about missions, even simple ones. If any of them were captured by some enemy force, they'd have little information to give about what their fellow guild members were doing. Today's work, however, did not require any secrecy. I've been asked to help remove a fallen tree which landed on a barn just outside the city, and then I'm lighting the winter mass bonfire. Well, you are the flame of winter. I hope I'm back in time to celebrate. Maud grinned crookedly, stretching the scars on her face. I love winter mass. You love the food. Well, who doesn't? Maud snorted, resting her ankle across her thigh. The dancing and ale won't go amiss either. Will the pair of you mind? Bodhi asked with annoyance. He was standing on his head now, one leg crooked. I am trying to meditate. Sorry, Bodhi. Maud still wore a sassy expression. One by one, the other members of the guild who were not out on missions found their way down to breakfast. Paloma and Creamhild came out of their room, laughing and bumping each other with their shoulders. Lotan came next, his usual serious expression lightening somewhat when he saw the breakfast that Elimas was laying out. Last was Mavis, her hair still a wild tangle of bedhead. She stood atop the stairs as though expecting everyone to turn and notice her. When no one did, she scowled, moved to the railing, and climbed up onto it. She put her fingers to her mouth and whistled sharply. Elimas clucked his tongue in annoyance as, from the shadows below the stairs, a creature which appeared to be made of mud scrambled out and formed itself into a human shape. It turned to the stairs and held up thick, imperfect arms towards the woman above it. Mavis, now certain that she had everyone's attention, jumped dramatically from the railing into the arms of the waiting golem. Morning, everyone! She said as the mud creature carried her to the table and set her gently on the bench. Her feet were bare, and now her clothes were smeared with a layer of grime. Elimus watched with a barely concealed scowl as she reached for the bread with a muddy hand. She tilted her chin towards him and gave a feisty grin, as if daring the wizard to challenge the habits of a druid. Elimus did his best to ignore her look, and, with a word, a fresh loaf teleported from the oven to the waiting serving board he held. He set it on the table and settled in with the group to eat. Even Bodhi could not resist the smells wafting from the table, and he served himself a large portion before retreating to a corner to eat it. The meal finished, everyone went their separate ways. Maud and Lotan suited up for their mission. Care for any enchantments? Elimas asked, reaching into his traveling bag which was hanging beside the door. He extracted a ribbon which bore a magical word intricately painted onto the fabric. They might want my enchantment. Mavis bounced over, holding out ribbons of her own. Each was smudged with a fingerprint. One was blood, the other mud, and the third looked like a grass stain. Elimus wrinkled his nose, holding out his pristine ribbons. Mavis grinned and cocked her head towards the fireplace, raising her hand towards it and crooking her finger in a come-here gesture. A tongue of flame fluttered away from the rest and scuttered over to Mavis, hovering just above the floor. Elimus tied one of his ribbons to Maud's arm as she held it out for him, watching with scorn as the fire Mavis had called leapt up and spread itself along the blade of Lotan's sword. The scout smiled and slashed the short blade through the air. The fire did not gutter, nor did it seem to require fuel. Elimus consoled himself that Mavis might have been able to make the fire join to the sword, but she could not create the flame, nor entice it to leave her hand and crash into an unsuspecting foe. Enchantment finished, and the warrior and scout on their way, Elimus put on his hat and took his longest walking staff from beside the door, the one adorned with a green orb at the top. The people liked a wizard to have a good staff. For a while, it was wands, but now staves were in fashion. He'd heard a rumor that some other famous wizard, the Grey or some such, favored the use of one. Elimas sighed as he pulled his long cloak over his robes. He hoped that one day he might set a trend or two. The first thing he would be doing away with were the ridiculous hats. At least the brim would keep the sun out of his eyes. He patted his belt pouch, just to be certain he had the only truly magical item he would need. A book of spells. 
He didn't often forget the words of power or the true names of things, but if he should, a quick glance at his book would soon set him on the right path. And the people liked to see it from time to time. They assumed it must be filled with secret arcane knowledge and would ooh and ah over it. Outside the day was cool, but not frigid. The houses, most of them two-story and well-built, kept out much of the harsh winter wind. Heim was a large city and well-maintained. It rose up on a hillside like a creature about to stand on its haunches. Atop the highest point rested the palace where the king and queen resided. Their majesties liked to keep the guild close by in case of crisis. The guild hall itself nestled at the base of the hill near the edge of the city. This placed the guild's members within walking distance of the city walls in case of attack. It meant a trek up steep streets if they were summoned before royalty, but it really was best not to cluster the two most important structures in Heim too close together. The sun was shining now and Elimus felt his mood lift considerably. He might have whistled a jaunty tune if wizards were supposed to do that sort of thing. Whistling was for bards and their sound-based magics. He strode off down the street. Already the snow which had fallen the day before was packed down with the heavy tread of people, horses, and oxen. Such animals had recently been by, Elimus noted as he picked his way around several steaming piles. He glanced towards the city center where the bonfire was already being carefully laid out for the day's and the night's celebrations. Midwinter marked a time of high magic in their land. People would sing of the icy winter god and how he was waiting for his bride, the goddess of summer and plenty.